Hi, so fun to hear. Sometimes we want to make some cool things with microcontrollers like Arduino and Raspberry Pi and don't know where to begin. And there are so many materials on the web and you may not know from which to get your feet wet. So here, we make these tutorials for you to get started with Arduino quickly. Arduino is an open source platform with software and hardware. You can quickly pick it up even if you are a beginner. You can use it to make experiments about, let's say, button, LCD, motor, etc. It provides an integrated development environment, or IDE, for code compiling, compatible with multiple control boards. And this is our Sunfound Uno board. And here we will use this as an example and show you how to install IDE and how to apply it. For more information, please refer to arduino.cc. In this episode, let's first install the IDE on a computer running Windows. First, you need to download the software. Go to the arduino.cc, the, the official website. There are a few sections on the page. Download is for IDE downloading, products for selling official boards, and learning for viewing the tutorials, forum for discussions. Now click download. This is the latest Arduino IDE release. Below you can find more versions. You can click to download any as you like. Here you can download the latest version. It is provided in a few links for different operating systems including Windows, Linux, and Mac OS X. Here we can see two links for Windows, one is dollar and the other zip file. You are recommended to use the installer since it will automatically install the driver for Arduino IDE installation. So you can just download it and run the executable file to begin installation. But if you download the zip file, you need to install the driver by yourself. If you have Mac OS X installed, click here. If your computer is running on Linux, choose from here a 32 bits, 64 bits, or experimental. On the page, you can see a download button and a contribute one. The official website wants users to donate, but if you don't, that will be okay. Just click download. Click on the executable file. The license agreement will appear. Just click I agree. These are the components that you can decide to install or not, like the software, USB driver, store manual, shortcut, etc. You are recommended to select OR for convenient use. Click Next. Select the path to install. By default, it is set in C disk. Or you can click Browse and choose another path. Click OK. Then click Install. It may take a while. After the installation is done, click Close. Please note that a new IDE may prompt errors when you are compiling code under Windows XP. So if your computer is running on XP, you are suggested to install Arduino 1.0.5 or 1.0.6. Also, you can upgrade your computer. Either way will work. Connect the MCU to your computer via a USB cable, A port to B port. The USB cable can be used not only to upload sketches to the board, but also supply power. After plugging in, the green LED on the board, this one labeled with ON, will brighten. The yellow LED, the labeled with L, will flicker first and then keep steady on. If you downloaded the installer upon your connecting the board to the computer, the computer will help you install the driver automatically. After a while, a prompt may appear in the taskbar indicating the driver is installed successfully. It depends on computers, so if you don't see it in yours, don't worry, it's still okay. Here we can see the unit board is at port COM34. Here I will show you other boards. Magnet 2560 is at COM54. Now change a board driven by FTDI. Here is our Mars board. You can see here the driver for the board is installed.
You can also check the port on Device Manager. Right-click on your computer and click Manage. Find Device Manager under Computer Management Local. Now you can see the Magda 2560 at COM54. The other boards are similar. It's normal if yours is different from mine. So now the board is recognized by the computer. If you download a zip file, when you connect the MCU to the computer, it may not be recognized. Then you need to install the driver manually. Take these steps. First, extract the zip file you downloaded. Then right-click on Computer and select Management. Find other devices. Right-click on Unknown Devices or Arduino Board and select Update Driver Software. Then choose the second option, Browse My Computer for Driver Software. A window pops up then, click Browse. Then go to the folder where you just extracted the file. Here I go to Desktop. Go to the driver's folder and click OK, Next, Emanate a sec. Then the system prompts you the driver has been installed successfully. And the driver is for UNO. So the computer can recognize the board now. Click Close. Now back to Device Manager. We can see the board is UNO and is at COM34. Previously, we've installed the Arduino IDE and got some basics. Let's move on to how to use it. Double-click the Arduino icon created by the installation process. Then the Arduino IDE will appear. Let's check details of the software. This is the editing area of the IDE. Here's the name of the file you're in, the software version. In the menu, first, File. Click on it and on the drop-down list, there are general functions like New, Open, Save, Close, etc. Now pay more attention to the examples and preference. Under Examples, there are many built-in example sketches. If you're new to Arduino, you can start learning from these sketches. Then Examples from Libraries. These are example sketches from the library you add. Click File Preference. On the window, here the path is where the Arduino software is installed by default. Also is the default path for Arduino libraries. Later you may need to add, remove, or modify some libraries, so you better know this. You can set the interface language of the software. By default is English. Here change the font size of the code in the window. 20 is what you see now in this window. Increase or decrease as you want. For the both output, you can decide to view or not. For beginners, it would be better to check both compilation and upload, so the error details can be displayed if the sketch is not compiled or uploaded successfully. This option is to display the line number at the beginning of each line. This is convenient for you to locate at the exact line, so you are better to check. On the window, there are more options and you can try to understand and modify it and see the corresponding function. Then click OK to save the settings. In Edit list, some editing operations are provided with shortcut key commands. Sketch. Verify upload can be done here, but usually we just click the icons below the menu. More important is include library. All existing libraries are contained here. You can click Add Zip Library. Find the library file and click Open. Manage Libraries. You can find and view the current libraries. Under Tools, Auto Format is a very useful function. When writing code, you may feel messy with so many functions and values. To adjust the format, press Ctrl and T and the code will be neat now. And you need to select the board and port before uploading sketches. We can see most of the Arduino boards like Yun, Uno, Nano, and Mega are listed here. And for port, just select the one you see in Device Manager or the system prompted you in the taskbar when you plug in the board. 
and the very useful menu, Help. Here you can check the basics of Arduino programming, troubleshooting, FAQs, etc. Come find your entry if necessary. Here's where we write the code. When you create a new sketch, by default there are two functions, setup and loop. They are required in each and every sketch. Setup is to set the input and output of pins. Loop is the body of the program. During the code execution, this function will be run repeatedly. There are a lot of functions, variables, statements, and so on in specific format. Let's learn some basic ones in practice. Next, we are going to make the sketch to control an LED on and off. The Arduino board has a built-in LED already, which is attached to pin 13, so we use this LED. Now, let's get started. In the setup function, set the input or output status of pin 13 by pin mode. When you typed in a function correctly, it will automatically change into orange. And remember, output should be uppercase. And at the end of each line, don't forget to add a semicolon. So the pin 13 is set as output. In loop, set the repeated lighting up and dimming of the LED. Since pin 13 is a digital pin, here we use the digital write function. And pay attention to the case. Or lower except W. See, it turns orange. At a delay, is the time the previous function lasts. The unit is millisecond. Here we set it as one second. Then dim the LED. Set the pin as low and the LED will go out. Another delay. So the code is done now. You can try to compile it and see if it goes right. But before that, you need to save the sketch. Click the verify icon and it will prompt you to save. Select the path and give the sketch a name. Here, set it simply as blinking LED. Click save. It may take a while. When you see done compiling appear at the bottom, it means the code is compiled successfully. The results are shown at this area. You can pull the separator bar up to view details. These are the details of compiling. They are important when you've done the code wrong. Errors will be prompted here after compiling. For example, delete a semicolon here and click verify. So you can see the error. Expect a semicolon before the brace token. Generally, you only need to check the marked part. The software will highlight the errors with bright orange, so you can see errors or warnings clearly. The unmarked code is correct. In this error message, the path of the code file is shown. And in this sketch, it is in the function set up, so you locate the function. This is the line where the error lies. And the error is that a semicolon is needed before the breaks. So back to the code window, and we can see here really likes a semicolon. Edit then, and compile again. So compile is done successfully. Next, click upload to upload the sketch to the Arduino board. But before that, you need to select the correct board and port. Click choose board. Here I use Uno, so click on Arduino Genuino Uno. When plugging in the board, we see the COM port, so here just select it under Choose Port. Okay, now click the Upload icon, this right arrow. Actually, when the code is uploaded, the software will also compile it again and will not upload if there's any error. That means in actual use, you can just click Upload and no need to compile, because it's done in this action. During the upload, the TX LED and RX LED here will flicker alternately. It means the board is sending signals to the computer and receiving signals from it. After the upload is done, the LEDs will go out. When you see upload done at the bottom, the code is uploaded successfully. Okay, now you should have got the basics of playing Arduino. Try to make some experiments by yourself or 
following the tutorials on our YouTube channel. If you have any questions or ideas, welcome to post forums on our website. See you then.